Now, before you get confused with CSS and SCSS and what the differences between them are, I want to quickly go through each of them and just give you a quick overview of what the differences are between them and also where they come from. So first of all, we have SAS. And SAS is the original language, stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. And this is the original project that came up with these extra capabilities on top of CSS to be able to write better and more reusable code. And it's also the original syntax and language. And we're gonna see that the SAS syntax is a bit shorter because you don't use any curly braces or semicolons as you do in CSS. But we're gonna see that this is not necessarily better and it's basically a matter of personal taste which of these two syntaxes you prefer. So let's quickly compare this to SCSS. And SCSS stands for Sassy CSS and also builds on top of the CSS syntax. And SCSS was actually built with that purpose in mind to make it closer to the CSS language so that people using CSS can easily transition to SCSS without having to learn any new syntax basically. And what's interesting about this is that every CSS style sheet is also a valid SCSS style sheet. So the CSS syntax is basically a subset of the SCSS syntax. And nowadays the SCSS syntax has become quite a de facto standard you could say, even though many people still prefer the SAS syntax and it's really just a matter of taste. But since the SCSS syntax has become more popular and is also closer to the CSS syntax, we're also going to use the SCSS syntax for this course. Now if you do want to use the CSS syntax, you can do so, but in the lectures we're always going to use the SCSS syntax. Alright, so let's look at a concrete example to see how these two actually differ. Now here on the left hand side you can see the SCSS syntax which looks very much like the CSS syntax. You have your curly braces, you have your semicolons, but you can also have these nested selectors as you can see, where you can for example nest the P selector inside the container selector. But other than that it looks exactly like normal CSS code. And on the right hand side you can see CSS code, where you don't have any curly braces or semicolons and you have to indent the lines correctly so that the compiler knows which selectors you actually mean. So in this case, for example, you have to make sure to indent the color you want to give to the P tag a bit more than the previous lines because that's actually nested one level deeper. And similarly, you have to use a new line for every declaration you make because you don't have the semicolon to tell the compiler where one of the statements actually ends. So instead of the semicolon, you have to use a new line, which means that you can apply two different styles on the same line as you could do in the CSS or SCSS syntax. In fact, when we're using SCSS or CSS for that matter, we don't actually need to indent our lines at all. We just do that because it makes the code more readable. But in CES you really are required to indent your lines correctly. Now those are the fundamental differences in the syntax between SCSS and CES. Now there are actually a couple more differences and I attach this cheat sheet at the end here where you can see what the differences are. We don't need them yet because they refer to mix ins and include statements and so on. But you can see that in the CES syntax the add mix in declaration is replaced by just an equal sign and the add include is used by just putting a plus before the mix in. And I'm going to attach this file to the lecture material so that you can take a look. If you do want to use the CES syntax you can look up here what you have to do differently which is basically just these mix in and include statements and then you can just go ahead and use whichever syntax you want. Alright, so those are the differences between the two. I hope that cleared up things a bit. Now I may use these two interchangeably in the lectures sometimes, but don't be confused, the syntax we really use in this course is always the SCSS syntax. Even though both of them are tools that give us these additional capabilities on top of CSS. Alright, so that's it about the differences and I will see you in the next lecture.